Hey everybody, it's Angie from Trips with Angie. Welcome to video number two in my Japan series. Hopefully you're a subscriber. So you caught last week's review of my flight from Tampa, Florida to Tokyo, Japan in United Polaris business class. So I've been here about a week and I wanted to share with you some tips and tricks I picked up so that when you head to Japan, you can hit the ground running. So the first thing is the immigration paperwork. It's very important to go online and complete your immigration paperwork before arrival. I'm going to link in the first comment to a blog post where I'm going to include all of this information so you can just follow along there. But they have a website you can go to so you can pre-register everything you need. In our case, we needed to show proof of vaccination to avoid having to take a COVID test for the current requirements to enter Japan. So you can enter all of that information in advance and it gets approved so you feel comfortable and confident coming into the country. Now, one thing I did wrong is I didn't have all of the screenshots I needed. So when you complete all of the information, you're going to get three key pieces of information. One is an immigration QR code that shows you completed all the immigration paperwork. Two is a customs QR code. And then three, if you click on the quarantine requirements tab, that will take you to a form that shows you that you've met the quarantine requirements. So you want to make sure you have screenshots of all three things. Now you also need to connect to Wi-Fi upon arrival in Japan because the customs QR code is dynamic, meaning uh, you're going to have to use it and then show that you used it. I'll explain it. So you're going to get off the plane. As you get off the plane, there will be people there holding signs to make sure you've completed the immigration paperwork. They also have computers if you need to log in, if you haven't done it in advance. It's very important that you have on your person your email and your password for the immigration website. Luckily, I had written that down and I had it readily available so that because I needed to go back into the website to show the immigration officials that I had completed all the paperwork. So make sure you have that password and your email that you use to set up your online Japan account with you, easily accessible. You'll need to connect to Wi-Fi either through the airport's Wi-Fi or we have Google Fi so that connected immediately when we turned off our airplane mode or if you have another travel pass through a different cellular provider. All of those are options so that you'll be able to get back into the Japan immigration website and show any of the documentation needed. Now I also screenshot some of the QR codes as well as making sure I had that password. So your first checkpoint is going to be the quarantine checkpoint. Now this was the procedure we used at the Tokyo Haneda airport. It may be different at other airports but the first checkpoint was a quarantine checkpoint. They wanted to make sure you had fulfilled all of the COVID requirements. Now because I hadn't screenshot that particular form. We got pulled to the side, but it was very easy. There was a lot of people there to help. They helped us log in to the website and then were able to help me navigate to show that I had completed the quarantine requirements. Then we got into a long line to go through the immigration process. Now at this point, they wanted the immigration QR code. So we got into the line, we scanned our QR code, presented our passports, very easy process. Then we moved on to customs. This took us into the area we were able to grab our baggage. Now, I thought you just because you had the customs QR code, you could go through, but that's not quite enough. So after you get your baggage, there's a number of kiosks located a lot around the baggage claim area. You'll go to that kiosk, scan the customs QR code you got in advance, confirm all of your answers are still correct, and then you'll be able to go through. Basically what happens through the app, which you'll have on your phone, a blue bar will appear on top of the QR code showing that you checked back into the kiosk within the baggage claim area. At that point, you'll head out, you'll pass through customs. It's a facial recognition process. You'll pass through customs and be on your way. Another thing you might want to consider doing in advance is pre-booking Wi-Fi or a SIM card for your phone. 
This is a Wi-Fi hotspot. I'm renting it for the three and a half weeks we're here for 137 US dollars. You can use it to attach to multiple devices. I was able to pick it up at the airport. So I booked it in advance and I'll share that link with you. Then we got into a line. We had the voucher that we used and the receipt, basically the email you receive. So you just take that and you stand in line. It was about a 30 to 40 minute wait to get it and pick it up. And then you pick it up. It comes with the hotspot, the instructions, how to use it and a charger and then this will have you have Wi-Fi as you walk around town everywhere you go this is a great option if you don't want to use your cellular plan travel pass um, again we have Google Fi now so I technically didn't need it but I wanted to have easy access so I could use my computer and my phone and all of our different devices so definitely worth it if you think you're going to be using a lot of Wi-Fi or you need want to use the Google Apps which I'm going to talk more about to navigate your way throughout Japan Another thing we booked in advance was the Japan Rail Pass. And I'm not entirely sure it was the right decision. So the Japan Rail offers a rail pass for tourists who are visiting, so people who are there on a tourist visa, where you can get a discounted price to have an unlimited pass. So we purchased one for 14 days. However, we purchased it through a third party seller. So this uh, was someone who was linked through a blog and a lot of the blogs do link to these third party sellers because they provide commission. We did not purchase it directly through Japan Rail and now I'm wondering if that was a mistake. So basically what happens is you get mailed a voucher and then you have to take that voucher to one of the railway station travel centers and exchange the voucher for your actual rail pass. When we arrived in the Haneda Tokyo airport, the line to exchange the voucher was two hours long. We stood in line for an hour and then we just gave up because we arrived in the late afternoon. We had already been in line an hour. We had an hour train ride ahead of us plus a 15 minute walk. And at that point we didn't want to be navigating in the dark trying to find our hotel. So we just gave up went and grabbed a taxi, headed to the hotel, and tried to find another opportunity to exchange the voucher. We stopped at several rail stations over the next couple days. The line was usually 30 to 40 minutes to an hour. Luckily, we found the Unino station, U-E-N-O station. That one actually had two separate lines. They had one line for redeeming your voucher and then one line to make your trail train reservations. That was awesome. That meant we had no wait to get our rail pass exchanged. So that was a huge plus. Now, the trick I found out later is if you purchase your rail pass directly through the Japan Rail website, you create an account and then you can use that account to make train reservations, which saves you a little bit of time as you're going around Japan. So depending how many trains you're going to be taking, if you're going to be taking the fast trains, if you're going to be on trains that require a lot of reservations, you may want to consider just buying it directly through the Japan Rail website versus one of the discounted third-party sellers. But overall, having the Japan Rail Pass has been terrific. It doesn't work on every train. So in Tokyo, for example, there's a monorail, there's a subway, and there's the Japan Rail. So for the subway, you need to purchase an IC card, which you can purchase at kiosks within the train stations, and you can use those, but then you need your Japan Rail Pass on any of the Japan Rail options. Now, your IC card works everywhere. It's basically just a debit card that you can use on any of the buses or trains. So if you just don't wanna mess with it, don't wanna mess with the Japan Rail Pass, you absolutely can just get an IC card and then just keep charging to that. The thing about that is it's gonna be expensive. It's You won't get the same benefit or the same discounts of having the Japan Rail Pass, but it will be easy because you'll just tap your IC card, go through, and it will just charge you whatever it is to be on that particular train. For the high-speed trains, I do recommend making reservations to ensure you have a seat. You will also need to make a special reservation if you have oversized baggage. And oversized baggage is basically any bag that would not fit in the overhead compartment of an airplane. So if you are traveling from city to city and you have a larger suitcase, when you make your rail pass reservation, you need to make sure you're also booking oversized baggage space because at behind the front and back seats or basically of the rail car they have extra storage area for larger bags 
So Tokyo, getting around on the subway, it is a very complex and large system, but it's very clearly labeled. So the lines have colors and letters, and then the stops have numbers. So it's easy to follow along where you are and where you need to go. There's plenty of maps throughout the stations. The kiosks have an English button. And if you were able to get the Wi-Fi so you have access to Google Maps, Google Maps does a phenomenal job of showing you how to get from one place to another. So you just put in where you want to go, it will bring it up, and then it will bring up your different train options, where you need to get on the train, where the train is going, what letter and number combination you're looking for, what stop number you're looking for, and you can just follow along on your journey, making it very easy. It even tells you what cars and maybe Eat better to sit in so that you'll have an easier exit. So on the Japan trains, you'll have the train number where the train's going and then each individual car is numbered. So car number one, two, three, four, five. So depending on which car you sit in, you'll be closer to one exit or another. When you exit the train at the station that you wanted to visit, look up. There's gonna be plenty of signs directing you to different exits. Do you want the east exit, the west exit? It will give you the name of things at that exit. So for instance, when we were visiting the fish market, there was very clearly marked which exit you wanted to head towards so that when you came out from underground, you would be closer to the fish market. There's also signs directing you to where the elevator or escalators are located. There are a lot of stairs in the Tokyo subway. So if you have any mobility challenge or you just get tired, you you definitely want to keep your eye out for those elevator and escalator signs. Another Google app that'll be tremendously helpful is Google Translate. So download the Google Translate to your app, set it to Japanese to English, then when you go places, you'll be able to translate. We used it most for translating signs. There's a camera feature where if you click on the camera, it will show you, you can kind of use it as a viewfinder and just pass it over, or you can actually take a picture within the Google Translate app. So you have to be in the Google Translate app before you take your picture. Then take the picture and it will translate what's in the picture. Now it's not a perfect translation at all, but it will give you a general sense of what it says. So you could have an idea of maybe it's a warning you need to know about, maybe it's a direction, maybe it just says we're fully booked at this time. That's what happened to us. We went to this restaurant and we couldn't figure out like how to get in and finally we just Google translated the sign in front and it says we're fully booked. No more. We're not taking any more people today. So we would have stood there for a long time if we hadn't figured out the Google Translate app. So that is a great way to get around town. We use it on menus. A lot of the restaurants didn't have English menus, but they did have pictures, which was super helpful. So you could kind of piece together what you were ordering. Um, some even had QR codes where you could get a QR code, use the QR code to get an English menu. So make sure you know how to use a QR code reader on your phone. On most phones now, you just open your camera and hold it up and the website you need to access will pop up. But again, you're gonna need Wi-Fi for that. So make sure you have access to Wi-Fi. Wi-Fi is gonna be really helpful using the Google Maps app, the Google Translate app, and then any QR codes that in particular the restaurants have. Now to the restaurants. So we went to a lot of just regular restaurants, not fine dining. And we noticed there's a couple different ways the restaurants work. So the first way was to order outside. So order before you went into the restaurant. We saw this two different ways. One was an actual vending machine where you punched in what your order was going to be. That's very popular with ramen shops. The other one was a gentleman greeted us outside the door handed us a menu, and then had us order. Then once we ordered, we went inside and he directed us to a table. We kind of did the wrong thing at another restaurant. So we walked up to another restaurant and they had an iPad outside. Now we thought, oh, this is just another one of those restaurants where you order outside. Well, it turned out that the iPad outside was for takeout orders. So if we had peeked inside, we would have noticed that all of the tables had iPads on them. So that was our clue that the iPad outside was for takeout and the iPads inside were to sit in and dine. So we had our takeout receipt and we went up to the counter and we asked if we could sit down and they said yes. So they, you know, transferred our takeout order to a sit down order. Now, dining in Japan has been very efficient. This isn't a boozy brunch situation, at least to the restaurants we went to. And again, we were just going to regular restaurants, not fine dining. So it's very efficient. So it's you go in, you order your food, you get your food, you eat it and you leave. Some of the restaurants 
ones had buzzers. So we went in, we got seated, and it, when we, they handed us a menu, when we were ready to order, we pressed the button, they came and took our order. If we wanted a refill on anything, we pressed the button again, they would come again, and then they would leave the check on the table as soon as you, you ordered something and received it. Then that was the sign that we were to take the check to the cashier. Now, you want to be very careful not to directly hand money to anyone. It's considered very offensive. So a lot of places you're going to, even in taxi cabs, you're going to want to look for a little tray. This is where you're going to put your cash money or your credit card, just as a sign of respect and how they do things. So you're going to want to look for those little trays. If they don't have one, just kind of hold out your money um, and then they'll take it. Like for instance, in the fish market, not everyone had a tray. So we had to just kind of hand them money, but we kind of bowed a little bit to show respect. You will notice a lot of like bowing and head nodding, just in very polite. People are very kind, very polite. We had a lot of folks help us in different ways. A lot of folks spoke English, which is such a gift. I always feel slightly ashamed anytime we go anywhere because I don't know another language. And here we are halfway around the world and they're making an attempt and they're trying to speak English. And I'm just so grateful for it because I, I haven't done the same. And so I'm always trying to learn a new language, but it's just unfortunately not my gift. So you will in Tokyo especially find people who speak English so they can help you. If you stay at some of the more modern westernized hotels, there'll be staff that can speak English there as well. The second type of restaurant that I want to talk about is the ones where you sign up to go inside. So they won't have a, a host or anything like that, but right at the entrance or just outside the entrance, there'll be a clipboard with a list and a pen. And so you just go up and write your own name down and the number of people in your party. So don't wait for someone to greet you. Just head up, write your name down, and then kind of keep an eye out on where you are in the list because everyone else's names will be in kanji and Japanese characters and they always don't know how to say your name. So just kind of pay attention to where you are in the list and if you're not sure you can always go up and ask to see if they've called you to sit down. The other thing to look out for in restaurants is these little buckets that sit on the floor. What are they for? Your stuff. So they have these special things where they want you to put your purse or your backpack or your coat or whatever the things you're carrying around with you, they want you to put those in those buckets. So not on another chair, not on the floor, and it just keeps everything contained and nice and neat. So that's what those buckets are going to be for if you find them as you go around and visit different restaurants throughout Japan. Japanese hotels. So we were delighted to find out that many of the hotels we stayed in provide pajamas. Now it's a one size fits most. So I'm six feet tall, wide shoulders. They didn't fit me, but I just thought it was so delightful that every, at the first two hotels we stayed in, they included pajamas and slippers as part of their inclusions. You're also going to find very complicated toilets. So they are bidets that are electronic. They have different settings. So just keep an eye out on that. Uh, you want to look for the flush symbol. So that's this symbol right here. That'll tell you how to flush the toilet. Or it can get tricky if you're out at bars or restaurants. The toilet itself may have a regular flush like you would have at home, like a handle on the side or like the big handles on the back of the toilet. So if you don't see the flush symbol on where the bidet controls are, just look around the toilet for a regular toilet handle. I spent an obscenely amount of time <laughs> in one of the bar bathrooms in Tokyo, trying to figure out how to flush the toilet. And finally, I just realized, oh, it's right here on the side, like a regular toilet. So don't make that same mistake. The other thing to know about Japan is it is a very orderly, kind, efficient society. Do not jaywalk. We did not see a single person cross against the light in all of Tokyo. And in fact, if it started blinking when they were approaching the intersection, people did not cross. This is not a scenario where you're trying to sprint across the street to beat the light. So you want to be a very aware of where you are. You want to be following the rules. People line up. They line up very calmly, very efficiently. So for instance, in the subway, uh, people will stand on one side or the other. In Tokyo, they stood on the left 
And so they would line up on the left along the escalator, leaving the right side totally clear. And they would line up very far back and not take the right side at all because that's what you do. You line up and you stand on the left side, leaving the right side clear. So just kind of keep your head about you, be paying attention to what people are doing. Uh, they're always scoot over on the subway so if two people are trying to sit down and one person has a seat on other side on either side of them the person will scoot over to make room for the two people to sit together just very aware of your surroundings and very polite as you go through the day also very quiet um, we noticed there were a couple Americans on our train and we noticed because they were the only people talking and everyone else was talking very quietly or not talking at all. So one thing you're going to notice is the silence. You're also going to notice how clean it is. There is not litter anywhere, which is amazing because they took away all the trash cans after the sarin gas attack, but people just hold on to their own trash and wait till they get to a trash can. The 7-Elevens, Lawson's, Family Marts all have trash cans. So if you are looking for a place to throw something away, those are going to be good choices. But overall, I hope you have a wonderful trip to Japan. I hope these tips have been helpful to make your first visit there or your first visit in a long time there very successful. Please let me know if you have any questions. I would love to uh, try to answer them in the comments based on my experience. And hopefully you'll stick with me and subscribe and keep those notifications turned on for the rest of the Japan series. We, we are boarding a two-week cruise today all around Japan. So I'm excited to share all of that with you.